Greetings, it's I, Tantus Nair of Andrew your Lord and Emperor here at the Jacobin Empire, and welcome one and all. I hope you're having a great day, and you're ready to enjoy another video diving into Galarian in the Pathfinder world. Of course, if you're joining me live on Twitch, I Twitch. If you're joining me on YouTube, of course, hey, remember, like the bell, or like the video, ring the bell, subscribe, leave a comment. Hey, today... How many of you have played Wrath of the Righteous? Either have you played the game by Alcat Studios or played the actual adventure path? And if not, have you done adventures in Mendev or in the area of the world womb? Because that's what we're talking about today, Mendev, which is integral to the Wrath of the Righteous adventure path, but is also a major component about what's going on in the world womb slash Sarkona Scar. We'll talk about that entirely in its own video, of course, at some point in time, but for now, Let's look at the country of Mandev as a whole, kind of not beating around the bush, but including the amount of material that we need to when it relates to Wrath of Righteous and the World Moon. So, where do we look for information on these? Well, you can get some start from first edition from the campaign setting book and the Inner Sea World Guide. They're very great places. Plus, there's the World Wound book, which, as much as it is more about the World Wound slash Sarkona Scar, it does include information on Mendev. Mendev was the home of the Crusaders. You're not going to be on that. As for how Mendev is post World Wound, post when it's just a scar, the World Guide is your best point to look at it for Second Edition. And certainly, hey, the World Wound incursion, incursion in the Wrath of Righteous book. Hey, there's an adventure path stuff that deals with this a little bit more, and a book, the World Wound Gambit. So those are two other sources that give you some. Information, if you want to deep dive more into Mendev, its various locations, its, its cities and stuff like that, I'm going to just go over a lot of the basics today, as I usually do with these countries. I give you enough you're familiar with them, but not so much you couldn't do some of your own research. So, Mendev. All right, well, it's in northern Avastian. It's been defined for some time by its battle against Abyssal Forces of the World Wound, which lasted for nearly, was it three centuries? About three centuries. No, or two centuries, I'm sorry. Uh, what, what? No, it's 4724. It's 4724. So it's a century. God, I remember my glaring calendar sometimes in my brain. <laughs> Regardless, though, it doesn't really have much of a history before then. We'll, we'll talk about it, but for this last century... Basically, people from all over the inner sea traveled there to support their crusade against the demons, to draw them back and keep them in check. Plenty of fortresses of crusaders grew up during this time. You know, small group of heroes did manage to close the portal. And without reinforcements, the demon lord Descari slain, and the demons of the outer rifts kind of not being able there, they're cut off. So there are still demons in that region. There's waning. So, currently, the 5th Mendev Crusade ended in 4718. And at the end of the war, which we'll talk about their government, Queen Gallifrey stepped down and appointed Chancellor Arahi, a civilian, to rule Mendev. So now a chancellor's in charge, and they don't really have a monarchy, but they're kind of a monarchy. So the nation's dealing with the aftermath of the war, still dealing with their Sarkhanas Scars, remaining demons, and reclaiming corrupted lands. Plus, Hey, they're not united anymore. So, you, when you don't have demons to fight, it turns out that you have to actually rely on your like internal struggles and war with resources. It, it's a it's a mess. Let's talk about though that history before the Crusade and the World Wound opening because that's an important thing. Is Mendev does have a deep history. It stretches back plenty of times before the opening of the World Room, but. As we know it, it was just a simple nation inhabited by descendants of Iborian exiles with a less than seller reputation. Iboria is located in north, e located east of Brevary. It's part of the Casmarin continent. So that's if you just want to know Iboria just by a little bit here. The last prince of that land died around the time the portal to the outer rifts was opened. And that changed Mendev forever. So, Mendev pre-World Wound was simple. It was there. There wasn't much to it. It was a country, northern uh, Avastian, dealing with northern Avastian stuff. You know, not a lot of fanciness to it. 
Have a good lunch, Worm. Then in 4606, about 100 years ago, the world wound opened. There was an immediate reaction. The breach, the demons that poured out, it expanded slowly. But the threat eventually became serious. It was an invasion. And the nations of this region, basically, and while on the major benevolent churches, took notice and launched the first Mendev Crusade in 4622. Now, we have to talk the Mendevian Crusades. Oh boy. This is the big part of our topic here. And here's good old, the good old queen. That's uh, her majesty, Queen Gallifrey. Looking in her oh-so-well oh crusadery prime there. So, the first crusade. It was launched by the faltering Church of Aroden in an attempt to uh, whip the gods, fallen gods' remaining followers into religious fervy. They assisted their efforts by the growing Church of Iomade, showing up its own bonafi uh, that's bonafide and carrying on a work of its precedent, pre predecessor. Pilgrims, crusaders flooded up the river roads and into Mendev, and the country as a crusader state was born. Chelyx, Iser, er, uh, Andorin, dealing with their own internal conflicts at the time, basically saw this as a way to dis dis dispose of disposable nobles, wandering mercenary companies, and, you know, in that way, threw them to join the Church of Iomade in their efforts. Basically, undesirables to the north to fight the battle. They managed to push back the hordes, and the crusade was deemed successful. For about a generation, that frontier in the world room remained quiet. But the demons struck back with terrible vengeance, and the crusaders suffered defeat after a costly uh, battle, the worst loss being their city of Dresden in 4638. On the heels of that defeat, the second Mendend of Crusade, which was from 4638 to 4645, was launched. Unlike the previous one, they were unable to drive back their enemies to the Outer Rips and instead adopted for containment. Magical barriers called Wardstones were built along the southern eastern borders of the World Wound to check the demons' advancement and influence. They had to be maintained with rituals and prayers and continued to be a constant focus of attacks during the Second Crusade and all the wars that followed. So yeah, we got the ward stones up. I, uh, you know, there's a lot of this that gets hinted at in uh, Wrath of Righteous, if you want to go deeper into some of these lore based around this. The third crusade, number three, was 4665 to 4668, only three years. Demons changed their topic, tried to infiltrate, subvert, corrupt their enemies. This went poorly for the crusaders in this war, but importantly, the de demons weren't were able to undermine the unity of their opponents and create suspicion in their ranks. The wish hunts against demon cultists and traitors became commonplace, particularly around the northern city of Canabras, where a group of fan fanatical inquisitors led the purge of Mendavian forces, where hundreds were burned at the stake. Even those without traces of demonic taint were accused of collaboration because of Mendev's traditional animalistic religion seemed to be suspicious to outsiders. As the crusaders crusade grew on, ground on, new recruits began to draw more from the prisoners of the inner sea, whose containment, uh, commitment to serve came as discretion rather than, you know, desperation rather than religious belief. Hey, I can be imprisoned down here, or I can go fight in a crusade and maybe live, maybe die, maybe get some glory, have a chance to find something. So now we get to 4692, and a new leader emerged amongst the demons, a powerful Baylor known as, I'm going to butcher this dude's name, Kormanzade, the Storm King. He was able to damage Canabras' ward stones and cross the frontier, but was eventually driven back. This led to the Fourth Crusade from 4692 to 4707, to defeat the new menace before he had the chance to unite more of the demons under his banner. For 15 years, it was the longest and most exhausting of the Crusades, ending more out of fatigue on the part of the Crusaders than any major victory or, or tactical development. Then we get to the fifth Mendev Crusade from 4613 to 4718. This rose from the stalled efforts of the fourth 
and sparked by a new demonic assault on Canabras in 4713. They ripped the city's defenses apart in minutes, destroyed the Warstone. A small group of defenders inadvertently gained the Warstone's mythical powers and led Queen Galfari's defenders in a new war, a.k.a. the player characters became mythic and fought back, you know. In a five-year campaign was the most successful of them all. They slew the demon lord Deskrai and richly sealed the world wound, leaving only a Sarconis scar and what the demons had been stranded on the surface. And without leadership, the serious demonic threat evaporated as Queen Galfrey's forces surged forward and brought the crusade to successful coalition. Now, we get to the modern area. And Tarbophon frees himself in 4719, just a year after the last crusade he began to gather his forces. So, there were still crusaders living in Mendev. Hey, they were still finishing up the, you know, cleanup. And they saw this as an opportunity to fight a war they could understand. Hey, look, we're, we don't really know what's going on now. We're not really in a war. We're kind of here. So they strapped on their shields and armor and marched south to join those to defeat the Whispering Tyrant. So they found new purpose. Others found new purpose fighting the demon uh, Terazar in nearby Kionin. And some of the fighters have stayed in Mendev to make a common cause with the Kelid descendants of old Sarconis living in Mendev to resettle the ancestral homelands to the west. So yeah, so the Crusaders were split into three. Some went to fight Tarbophon and his forces, some went to fight uh, Tree Razor, and there's a bunch of them that are joining with the Kelids that once were in Old Sarkoris, and they're like, hey, we're going to help you reclaim your lands, purify them, get out the remaining demons, and resettle these areas. Um, and of course, their efforts are departed, uh, stymied by what's left of the demons there, and um, also some dangerous artifacts disguised as relics of the indigenous Sarkonis faith that have been left behind. Yeah. So that's where the Crusaders ended up, leaving us modern Mendev with some Crusaders left behind, some not, and things split apart pretty heavily in a lot of ways. Let's talk about the government, though. And let's talk at our good associate here, um, Chancellor Arahi, as she is the current head of Mendev's government. So basically, Queen Gallifrey, the Sword of Iomede, was the leader of the country up until now. And just as a little bit note for background in Queen Gallifrey without going into too much about her, she was the absolute monarch, leader of the crusade. She's a, she was over 100 years old, kept it with powerful magic and two drafts of Sun Orchid Elixir. And she is now the Herald of Iomede at the end of the crusade. So she's like a incarnation of Iomade on the material plane, a herald of them. So being that, you know, being a herald of your goddess, you're not really in a position to be in charge of a country. So she shows Chancellor Arai, who's the daughter of a Thuvian crusader, as her successor. Very interestingly. And Thuvians are the people that had the sun orchid elixir. So, yeah. Irahi's wise governor, but political divisions have emerged in Mendev, and she's been dealing with that. Over the century, it was a century of basically martial law during all of the Crusades, and now that's over. So you still have native Mendevians who've been there since the beginning, a lot of foreign Crusaders who've literally moved in in the last hundred years and settled there, you know, have been immigrants as part of this entire things. So, yeah. Also now, like, now that you're not getting funding for a war effort from a lot of other places, they're dealing with the nation's needs. Araha has been hobbled by those that compare her to the queen, also. So it's sort of like, she's not the queen from before Queen Gallifrey. So, Yeah. There is also still supernatural threats. The stranded demons from the Sarkona Scar, there's powerful beings, uh, the, the powers living in the Stovian Forest, and the cursed ruins of Icerith Castle. So there's also supernatural threats still left in the entire thing. And just the uh, Estonian Forest, to note that there just a little bit, there's like uh, the Curse of the Winterthorn, is related to that kind of thing, so just keep that in mind. 
and uh, the Ice Rift Castle, which is something from the first Mandabian Crusade. So, just just little notes on those, so we keep up with it. Mandeb still does have diplomatic ties with like the Kingdom of Bravery to the east. Nominal diplomatic presence in Ramirez and the River Kingdoms. And the government has ranged from being unwelcome to the hostile and to outwardly hostile towards Ramirez's attempt to spread his faith beyond the borders. Because the priests felt so rebellion wherever they go. Re rebel against this government. Install Ramirez as your new king. Join the country. Yeah, so keeping them out has been an issue too. Ice Breverie is nice. Economically, they struggle. A lot of their resources depleted during the war. The money and labor from foreign sources, as I said, has dried up. All but dried up. And they don't have a lot of arable land. So they can import a lot of goods to survive. And, guess what? They do also have a lot of those Kelids from the Sarconis region that are there still. That have been resettled there for a century that they've been having to deal with. So yeah. They're not doing great. Trying their best. But not doing great. Let's talk about the regions of Mendev. And here's a picture from pre uh, Wrath of Righteous. Just as an idea here. So it's the very north of Avastian. Of course its northern borders consist of the towering ice cliffs of the crown of the world. To the west, still the borders are marked by ward stones next to the Sarkona Scar, which still have an effect on keeping demons at bay. To the east is the Lake of Mists and Veils, which is a vast body of water that thousands of pilgrims crossed to complete the pilgrimage here. To the so south lies Numeria, separate by rivers along much of its border, which people of Mendev have little to do with their savagery and science. But it's still got snow-covered Mountains, icy steppes, thick evergreen forests. It's still got some nice things in there. So, yeah. Let's talk about their settlements briefly. So we can start, of course, with their capital. The capital is Narosian. The crusader capital of it. The first and foremost defensive fortification to hold back the demonic forces of the world wound. It's a strategic location in uh, the Eskri River and the West Selen River. It's got a lot of good drinking water in the area there. And because the, the, well, the Eskri is where they go for water because the West Selen goes close to the world wound and can be corrupted. The districts are the Battle District, the Eskri District, Conf Confluence District, and the uh, Wound War District. Plenty of defensive fortifications here, a Pathfinder Lodge, and yeah. Before the World Wound, it was a wilderness town with run-down bu bu buildings, basically. But then it became the heart of a crusade and grew into a city. So the country of Mendev really wasn't much before the next last hundred years. So yeah. Other towns, Dawn Town is a small village on the pla uh, plains between the Elske River and the Western Varian Forest. Uh, Dubrov, I'm going to butcher some of these here. Small village on the western edge of this uh, Estrovian Forest. Agage is a port town on the Lake of Mist and Veils, second largest city in Mendev, at the end of the River Road. This is where a lot of crusaders would enter the region for the Mendev Crusade. Canabras. Canabras, if you really want to deal with Canabras, that's when you look into um, Wrath of Righteous. It's the major one from that. So a lot of shit happened in Canabras. Uh, you have to literally look into the results of it post at the end of Wrath of Righteous to see what's going on there. I'll just remember it. It's, it's the city that really has a lot of shit happen to it. Poor Canabras. Uh, Kriga. Small town on the western edge of the uh, Estovian Forest as a stop the Crusaders route to the port of Edry to the front on the World Room Shatterglask near the Lake of Mist and Vales small village it's got a shimmering lake it's derived from it, the shimmering lake glass 
that blankets its shores. It's inhabited by retired pirates. And Vala's Gift, small town in the north, in the north of Mendev, located near the west Salmon River. And those are the named na uh, areas of Mendev. All right, let's talk about who lives here and the Crusaders. That's some, you know, a picture of um, stuff from Wrath of Righteous. Uh, it's just it was a nice picture there. So Mendev is a place where you've got your high-minded gallants to back alley thugs because so many people just moved in to fight a crusade. The original inhabitants were swept up in the zeal of a crusade. But those native families that have lived here before the crusade, and there's families that have lived here before the crusaders' arrival, though. The native Mendevians have much in common culturally with the neighboring kingdom of Sarconis. They did. The Iborian inhabitants tend to be treated as second-class citizens by the Crusaders and their descendants. They still practice ancient Druidic faith and animism. So that's the thing is, the actual people that lived here before are treated kind of crappy. It made them suspicious to being demons, and the Third Crusade purged a lot of them, which was kind of terrible. Of course, cults dedicated to Descari didn't help, too, because Sarconis was rife with it. The cults that erred and hunted down himself and destroyed during the Age of Enthronement. There's also a lot of Oshura spawn Cambians who were, had been undermining the holy work of the Crusaders. So yes, there are some knightly orders. We can mention them before we get to the actual Crusaders as they are. Guild of Diggers and Sappers, Order of the Emerald Sword, Order of the Flame Lance, Knight of the Rampant, Knights of the Rampant Dragon, or the Sunrise Sword. All of the, Those are just a sample of them. Let's talk the Crusaders. Just a little bit before we finish up today. Because they're the people that moved in here, and they are a mixture of people teeming up into this region. Certainly many of them have left since the end of the war. Some holy warriors, warriors continue to arrive to fight the last remaining, until the right, last remaining demon is destroyed. So yeah, we have the people, the Crusaders splitting into three. I talked about this earlier. But there are still people that arrive there. You know, there are still people that arrive that are like, hey, th those people that want to get rid of the last demons, they still go there. There's just a lot less of them. And yes, many went south to fight the Whispering Tyrant, Tree Razor, and Kionin, because it's another powerful demonic force. You know, and resettling Sarconis and removing the last demons is a big thing that plenty of these remaining crusaders... So it's like, like these crusaders... Yes, they've moved here. That Many of them are generations, families, things like that, that they've settled into this region over the last hundred years. But, yeah. And unfortunately, then, you've got the demons who have become subtle in the Sarconis Scar, disguising, corrupting, abyssal magic as a relic of Sarconis' shamanism or animalistic faith. The First Crusade was the most high-minded people, the most virtuous. Clerics, noble paladins... By the Fourth Crusade, though, mercenaries, prisoners that didn't have a choice, political dissidents, thugs, undesirables. So a lot of them came in, too. So it makes poor Mendev a very mixed bag of things. And that's, that's the issue with Mendev. Mendev is a mixed bag now. There isn't a lot left over. It suffered heavily. What could be called left of Mendez is a mess. Mendev just has suffered so much by being the source that fought against the world wound. If not for them, who knows how the demonic invasion would have gone. Probably not well. Their strength and dedication over a hundred plus years allowed eventually the right people to show up to close the world wound and stop the demonic incursion that occurred seemingly because of Aridin's death. Now Mendev has left a broken nation in a lot of ways. It wasn't much of a nation to begin with. It was a small rural place, small settlements of people living apart, having a general monarchy, being generally a country, but no major cities like the way we think about it. 
You think about the capital they have now, it was nothing like it was. It was a small rural place in comparison. Mendev became a country because of the Crusades, because of the world wound. But it's also broken as a country because of it. Mendev will probably heal eventually, however long it takes. There are people in charge. It's not a place of true chaos. And certainly, the same influx of people don't occur. Now when someone shows up, they are there for the right reason. And plenty left. Plenty of these crusaders, either forcefully, originally forcefully, or through glory or birth, have traveled on to bigger pastures. Well, new pastures. Tarbafan, Tree Razor. Big forces that are dangerous in the world in this part of Avastian. And still, plenty of remain to clean up what's left. Sarconis, it's safe for now. But it's not fully healed. Demons still remain. Corruption still remains. It'll probably take maybe another hundred years before that place is relatively clear of any kind of influence and a place people could call home again. Who knows? And I will talk about Sarconis, the country, and what happened to it in the future. But now we look to Mendev and those that look to that land, the last few crusaders there, the native Mendevians, they suffered through a lot of this. Under martial law, under honestly prejudice from the, pilgr from the pilgrims and crusaders that came up there to fight the demons, becoming second-class citizens in a way in their own country. Now they have a chance to re-rise up to prominence, to strength. And yeah, what will become of all this? What will become of Mendev? Hey, you know what? It's an interesting country with an interesting history and bravery in its blood. The Mendev that was born out of war will become, eventually, a stronger man. Props than it ever was. Well, that'll be it for today. I think that leaves us in the idea of Mendev and his country. If you enjoyed this stuff, I do more stuff live. If you want to check it out, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, the backup day. I have a live show of Pathfinder First Edition, Crimson Queen, Wednesdays at 9 p.m. EST. Saturdays at 6 p.m. is Discussing Tabletop, my tabletop discussion show, News of the Week, and more. And of course, I have social media's Discord and Twitter link below. Those are all the shout outs. A little bit there for other stuff I do. Again, always check it out on my Discord and Twitter when I'm doing more stuff and see if you're interested. But to all of you joining me, of course, live or joining me on YouTube later on, I thank you all for joining me. I hope you enjoyed learning about Mandev and maybe it'll actually make you interested in looking more into playing something like Wrath of the Righteous. I played the video game. I enjoyed it for the most part, but I, you know, don't know if I necessarily recommend it. It is unique in a lot of its ways. But perhaps playing through Wrath of Righteous, the actual adventure path, might be something that you want to try out. Little mythic characters. It's an interesting one, too. Regardless, though, if you ever want to check these out, or more of my stuff, go ahead and do it. And until next time we chat about anything, I bid you all a deep and wonderful Farewell.